Org. It's where community grows, and it's where you go to listen to Al McFarland. Conversations with Al McFarland coming up just in a moment. I want to thank Bruce and William there for checking in during Democracy Now! and donating into the program and other fine programs, including No Stress Express, East of Here, West of Now, and the Food Bar Omniverse. Um, some money in advance for travel, Ramo, fa, fa, fa. It just goes to show that uh, these folks are listening all the time. They're listening across the board. They're listening across the station all hours, finding information, finding news, finding music they wouldn't hear anywhere else. Al McFarland, you're here with us. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, Al. Good afternoon, Mason. How you doing, my friend? It's good. It's good to see you. Al, Al as you may know, if you listen week to week, has been... Uh, broadcasting remotely since the beginning of the pandemic and Mm -hmm. you know we're not out of that pandemic yet and honestly you found you found a good media home for yourself there in the in the physical sense at home at home yeah and and loving it actually the technology is amazing because Mm -hmm. sitting here I'm, i'm with you in studio but i'm with friends of mine all over the planet uh, yeah. Friends who are checking us out in Zimbabwe, in Ethiopia that we talked to, Jamaica, in Kingston. Friends who connect with us uh, in California and uh, around the corner in North Minneapolis on the West Bank and Summit University in St. Paul. So this mm-hmm. uh, technology uh, is really amazing in its capacity to connect us to each other. It's a wonderful thing. I'm thankful to KFAI for the um, anchor we have become in public policy and culture and diversity in this marketplace. And I want to join you and ask all of our listeners and viewers, Mason, to join us in supporting this important work. Easy to do. Just give us a call. 612-375-9030. 612-375-9030. Pledge your support today. Support this work. Let us know that you, you're listening. You're paying attention that we bring value to your life. We we want that to happen. What do you yes. think, Mason? I think that sounds great. You can go to kfai.org as well if you uh, if you're not in a place where you can pull out a phone. I want you to think back to even just the last couple of weeks. If there's if there are guests, if there are topics that you've heard on this particular program that have sparked a new conversation within your family, within your friends, even within our live chat over here, I saw a lively chat here about a week or two where. Uh, people were talking about uh, when you had folks on representing uh, uh, the public schools, talking yeah. about uh, educational disparity and things they had learned during the teacher strike. And, you know, welcome our teachers back. Uh, your fight is not done. But uh, they they heard perspectives on conversations with Al McFarland that they did not hear anywhere else. It gave them a new thing to talk about and maybe something to argue about. If somebody says, well, you're wrong. Well, they they got the facts from Al McFarland. Well, and uh, you you bring you bring in new perspectives, and that's my point. The people I saw on there were not necessarily. You wouldn't even necessarily think, oh, that's the that's the show they're listening to at one o'clock. But they're learning from you. They're learning from you. We're thankful for you. We're thankful for those who listen and those who support. Six one two three seven five nine zero three zero. Well, you know, I just sent a note to uh, Ilhan Omar asking that if she's available sometime in the next hour to jump on the call because she sent out a press release calling for the resignation of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Oh. And now I've seen another press release today from, I think, uh, 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 Representative Ocasio calling for mm-hmm. the same. So that's going to be growing. It's an important topic. I want to uh, sort of commend uh, and point out what I think is the uh, fierceness and fearlessness of uh, our representative Ilhan Omar uh, jumping on it first. And uh, Mm -hmm. at a time when most Democrats, our friends, uh, seem to be, you know, slow walking it. uh, She's come out boldly and the progressives are being bold. So I hope she's able to join us in the course of this hour. If she shows up, I'll bring her in. We'll go from there. But let me ask you, Mason, real quick before you leave. You know, the big topic on black social media is (laughs) the slap heard around the world. Have you been hearing much of that today on on the show or? Um, There has, yes, there has been some discussion here. Um, 
frankly, I've, I've heard some discussions by people that uh, maybe don't have their business <laughs> poking into there. I've, I've got my own thoughts on it, but. Uh, well, tell me, I'm, I'm curious. What, what, what are you your know, thoughts? Oh boy. You're going to put me right on the spot there. Well, th- this might not bring it. Maybe this will bring in the calls. Um, I understand where he's coming from. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think it's right. I think it's irresponsible for for folks at that level, that level of fame, that level of notoriety, to conduct business in public like that. That said, I understand. I, I, I you know, I, I've, I've read Will Smith's apology. I know there's one that's floating out for Chris Rock that uh, does not seem to be uh, true. Mm-hmm. Uh, it might be false. I, I've I've read where he's coming from, and I appreciate the apology i don't think it excuses it um there has been there's been lively discussion here and i'm pretty sure lady j's got a lot to say on that topic in the next hour or two that there are better ways to conduct that business and and you know you're you're in front of a million people so yeah. if if that was not a publicity stunt which a lot of us also think it could have been probably was the case yeah. Hope, hopefully um, it was even in poor taste I, it's yeah that well that that's definitely a modern thing is uh you you can get away with uh, poor taste publicity but uh, mm-hmm. you know as long as you get the eyes on it and mm-hmm. they are right that the Oscar <laughs> Oscar <laughs> Oscar viewings were down fifty eight percent and then suddenly oh somehow we're talking about it yeah so, yeah shot in the arm for the organization um, so, if it yeah if it if he really had if he really had a contention to do he was on he was on stage ten minutes later yeah. That that would have given him ten minutes to come up with, you know, a good verbal slap. Mm-hmm. His family, his family got slapped verbally, which is what he was saying. But, mm-hmm. you know, give it ten minutes. So so, just just sit on it. And definitely, I say that as somebody that you know acts on emotion when they maybe shouldn't. I haven't gotten slapped. <laughs> I haven't mm-hmm. slapped. I haven't slapped Chris Rock. But I think this is even one of his bits from the back then. You know, I went. I wouldn't do this. I, I think he said I wouldn't hit a woman. But I understand, mm-hmm. or something like that. In one of his prior routines, yeah, right? one, yeah. one, yeah, one of his prior routines. Yeah, I was trying to yeah. think back to it, and I'm sure the internet's got all of that on everywhere. I get why Will Smith did what he did. Don't agree with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't want to go public either side because I don't, I don't actually know what what my what my partner would want me to do. <laughs> so oh, I do not I want know. her to hear on the radio. No, I wouldn't do that, and for me to come home and say, "Oh, you wouldn't." <laughs> you know? So thank you for putting me on the spot, Al McFarland. Thank oh, you for putting yeah. feet to the fire. I appreciate that you do that. I appreciate you do it every week. And if you appreciate that, 612-375-9030, kfai.org. How about, how about $35 donation if you agree with Will Smith, 45 if you agree uh, with Chris Rock? There we go. <laughs> there. <laughs> let's get that. Let's get, let's get your vote out there. And then we'll 30, see if, 30, if 35 that money, supporting real Will Smith. Yes, 40, 45 supporting Chris Rock. 45 we'll, Chris Rock. We'll report yep. that out at the end of the hour. Yep, so, okay, we'll, we'll add those up at the end of the hour here. Okay. So KFAI.org. Great. Thank you so much. Well, I'm Al McFarland. This is Conversations with Al McFarland. Thanks to my colleague Mason for uh, that uh, lively exchange. You know, But I just have to keep uh, iterating how important it is that we have this conversation, this venue, that allows us to talk about uh, things that uh, are important to our community. And one of the things that <clears throat> I've been aware of that I got a press release on, I think yesterday, was about some activity happening with the Northside Boxing Club. And I see on my screen here, uh, Brother uh, Drill uh, is the name. Brother, good afternoon. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing, Al? I'm doing good, doing good. You so I, I read quickly that you all are doing some things where you're providing boxing gloves to uh, yeah. people in community. And I guess that's a way to introduce the entire community to the variety of benefits that come from physical activity in general, yes. boxing in particular, as a pathway. Uh, yeah. I hadn't thought about this, but... Uh, that is a perfect segue from the slap, you know, yeah. <laughs> to, to yeah, boxing because yeah. bo- boxing would have been the appropriate way to handle there that. You got a beef, yeah. take it to the ring, right? Take it to the gym. And we can hug it out afterwards. And hug it out afterwards, yeah. right? And everybody kind of knows yeah. what the routine is. So so uh, good go. to see you, man. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Thanks for having me. 
Well, thank you for being here. So talk about what's going on. First of all, give me give me your background again. Let's people don't know uh, all you've done. Talk about your work in the profession in the craft. And uh, okay. then let's talk about the, the gym and, and the project. Okay, I came up in uh, North Minneapolis boxing. I went through the amateur program. I won a uh, I won two golden gloves, uh, three state championships, and uh, then I turned pro in 2006. And I had a, I had 29 professional fights. During those fights, my third fight, I obtained the fastest knockout in boxing history, which was what? And uh, uh, the first punch of the fight, he first, ran right at me. What? Yeah, one second, one up. second match. Uh. One second. Yeah, one second. You look it up. Just put in uh. Box a uh, world's fastest boxing knockout, it'll come up. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of been my you know a little claim to fame around the neighborhood and things. And so when we opened up the gym in 2016, uh you we used boxing as a form of uh, a metaphor for life to help teach these kids about life sure. through boxing. Yeah, you know, about proper preparation and, and every day working at working at a craft to have a goal in mind, you know, to accomplish uh, to accomplish things and to overcome struggles and become conquerors. And we do all this through boxing. And it's not necessarily, I, I think all these kids are going to be boxers. Is this is this a, a source that I use mm -hmm. to teach them life, to get their attention? Mm -hmm. You know, because first you got to get the kids' attention to give them some knowledge. And once they know you can punch and knock people out, they're like, oh, they want to listen. <laughs> Let's <laughs> focus on this right here. <laughs> yeah. And when they realize I'm giving them something different, I'm giving them a little bit more. I'm giving them some hugs. I'm giving them some information yeah. about life and how they can perceive life and and take on life um, with more information instead of just trying to figure it out the hard way, mm -hmm. you know, cause I did the hard way already, mm -hmm. you know, so I let them learn from a lot of my mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes and I, and I, I, I like, the, and I teach them to learn from it. So they don't have to make the same mistakes. So that's, that's kind of like our overall wrap up about what, what we do at the gym mm -hmm. and the drill stands for it directly related to the inner city with love and loyalty. Hmm. And it, yes, and it comes with a symbol. We got a sign we throw up. That's on the gloves. You'll see it. Okay. And uh, it stands. And it stands for overcoming struggles and becoming a conqueror. Ah. Yeah, because I understand that everybody goes through some type of struggles and they have to conquer it. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's how we grow. That's how we get to the next level. We have to go through adversity. But you can't climb a smooth mountain. I tell them that all the time. Mm -hmm. It's always rough. You know? Yeah. 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 So, so the the glove giveaway. Talk about that promotion. What's the concept? Uh, what do people need to know? You know, and I'm going to come back and and go back over your story because it's a fascinating story. And uh, brother, I, I'm just so glad to have this one on one conversation with you. And I want to use this time to elevate your story, you know, your vision, and right. break it out. I see you got a champion in the back seat there. I, I see oh, you, yes, got a, yeah. you got a boss <laughs> back in the yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I got one on the way next month. So we're Do at the you? hospital now. She's at the doctor now. Yeah. Congratulations. Who's in who's in your back seat sleeping there? Okay, that's uh that's baby Phil the drill. So that's Phil Williams Jr. Phil Williams Jr. Yeah. Baby Phil the drill. He's just peaceful. Yeah. I, I see his face. He's uh so I'm gonna have to describe yeah. you for radio. I see him because we're on social media, but this kid is as peaceful as the world. He's just uh in his space so great yes, beautiful yes. child man and one on the way yes one on the way we're at the doctor's appointment now <laughs> <laughs> congratulations yeah, so my wife just, yeah my wife just went in there so i can do the interview when's your next baby do uh may 24th okay cool soon soon yeah. soon so we just, just add just adding to it yeah. Add to the, uh, add to the yes. Okay. Great. 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 So, so talk about the promotion. Uh, you're doing a, a boxing gloves. You're making gloves available. What's the concept there? What's going on? Okay. okay. We're selling the gloves to be to be able to um to fund the gym to, to okay. keep the gym self yeah to keep the gym uh self sustained. Okay. So you know it's hard you know uh constantly begging for money uh, uh looking for sponsors and grants. So we're trying to find a way that we can self sustain to keep this going. Because mm. it's a beautiful program we got. You know, we feed the kids every day. We got food coming. Mm. And the gloves, it helps provide all of that. Mm. You know, the, the price of the gloves and the, the monies we get from that helps provide all that uh, for the kids to take them out of town for uh, fights. You know, um, even the kids that are not fighting, just to let them participate in the tournaments. Mm -hmm. To be around and show them there's other parts of boxing that you can be in without actually fighting. You know, or just using the concepts of boxing to take it to life. Okay. Okay. You know, so, but so basically, that's what the gloves are for, just to keep uh, self-sustaining our gym. So we're just set, we're trying to sell them everywhere, just to you know keep it keep it going. We need more kids in there. 
especially what's going on in the cities now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we got youth violence and stuff. Violence, youth violence, you know, teachers going on strike and leaving the kids back in the streets. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we got to grab those kids because when they go to the streets, that's when the trouble happens. Mm -hmm. And that's when we got to open our doors up. I mean, it's got to be open during those school hours. If they're if the school is not if school's gonna close, we'll open up for them. We'll feed them. Keep coming here. We got you. And that's what we have to provide that pace that that place for them in North Minneapolis because it's they need those sanctuaries, and we don't have too many of those sanctuaries. Let me put your your website address uh, <clears throat> in the chat here. What is your website address? For the uh, for the gloves or for the, for or the gloves or for the box. Oh yeah, either one. Yeah, yeah. No, Northsideboxinggym.com. I'm gonna type it and put it in the in the uh, chat here so people can are on online here. Uh, north, yep, north side boxing. Uh, I'm spell it right. North side boxing gym. Yep. Yes. North side boxing club. I'm sorry. Boxingclub.com. Yes. Yes. North Minneapolis. Um, okay. And so I, I just typed in uh, North side boxing club You have to add yes. more to it. Um, no, I think that's it. Oh, okay, great. So I'm going to post that so people can see I'm not that. Good with, I'm, not, I'm not good with the websites, but they'll find it from there. They'll find <laughs> it. They, they can, so just so yes. you know, uh, not only this going out through KFAI's website, Insights website, and also going out to Black Press USA, which is the website oh, wow. of uh, the Black Press of America nationwide. And so, <laughs> Brother Williams, um, uh, the, the club, what's the address of the club, Northside Boxing Club? 1704 33rd Avenue North, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Used to be a fire station, old, right? Old firehouse, very uh -huh. well protected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You come on there, it's a shelter. It's a shelter for real. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, it's a shelter yeah. from the storm. And so, if people come up to the gym, what are they, what are they going to find? What's going on? Can people just drop in to visit or not? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Come on in. You're gonna see. You're gonna see kids around here smiling, having fun, boxing. You're gonna see parents. You're gonna see little kids, older kids. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of my kids. Uh, <laughs> you're <gonna> see, <laughs> and you're gonna see a lot of inter kids interacting with each other. Mm -hmm. One thing I do, I like to teach them a principle because we move on a movement. It's not. It's not just about boxing. That's just my my thing to get you there. Mm -hmm. Then when you get there, you know, I, I give the kids hugs every morning, every time mm -hmm. they come in. Because, you know, just the stress of life, you know, a lot of these inner city kids don't get hugs and they don't get told a lot of positive things during the day. So I like to tell them a lot of positive things during the day, give them hugs, give them instructions, feed them and exercise. Mm -hmm. And from there and from there, we can create a healthy community. What what kids what, what us providing that and more people uh, even coming down and helping us create this village. You know, we have uniforms, just, you mm -hmm. know, everybody wearing our north side stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is our symbol right here. Okay. So, you know, so, so people are starting to recognize that in the in the, in the in the city, when you see these kids, you can kind of direct them back to the gym, or let them know, hey, I know your coach, I know I know where you're supposed to be at. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of it kind of keeps people accountable. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell the kids when you, when you wear this, you 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 have to be accountable when you're putting this stuff on. You got to represent. You know? <clears throat> yeah, represent. Yes, you are. The um, so the club invites boys and girls, right, men and women. <laughs> And all, all ages. Girls. What's the all, all age ages. range of people people that might be in the club at a given time? From what to what? Seven to nineteen. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then we have some adults that come in, but we charge the adults because that goes towards the kids. Right. The kids are totally free. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you might okay. see some college kids or just a kid coming in uh, during his breaks during college. They might do a different sport, but they come in to get some boxing in to help them out whatever other sport they're doing. Mm -hmm. so Michelle so Madison is watching from out east. She says that's a great concept and endeavor. It needs to be rep replicated in cities throughout the country. Yes. Michelle, thank you for yes, being a, a regular listener and viewer of the program. And thank you for that observation. And I want to invite, invite anybody else that would like to join the program to uh, do so. We'd love to have your comments, your feedback. I think I'm going to be able to post uh, the, um, <coughs> excuse me. The URL. Um, yeah. I've got a cough. Hold on a second. Let me mute here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. A, a <clears> gym, <throat> a gym, yeah. A gym like this needs to be in every city. Mm -hmm. You know, because most boxing gyms, you know, they're more, they're more you know they're more there to go win trophies and championships. But this mm -hmm. is not that type of gym. You know, you can take your skills and go win whatever you want, but 
this is more about teach about more about teaching the skills and instructions of life, giving you some love, man. You know, something so you can have after boxing, life mm -hmm. after boxing. Mm -hmm. The boxing it's a short period. It's a you get a short period of time in boxing, and then life starts. You know, we've got guys like we have examples like Mike Tyson and guys like that who who can give you a full redemption about how they went all the way through life, and now they can come back around and help people to go to help them uh go through the things that they went through that they might recognize that, hey, I had a problem like that. Let me, can, I, can I tell you how I went through it? You know, let me show you through my examples. You know, and it's just that type of gym. So, that, and that's what we push. It's a movement. So it's, 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 based, it's based on principles. Let me introduce you to another friend and another uh, uh, educator, teacher, mentor like you. Brother Andre Fisher heads the Twin Cities Mobile Jazz Project. Is that right, Andre? Is that still yeah, the right name? Uh -huh. uh, good, good to see you. I, I saw you smiling backstage at the conversation. So let me because I was you looking in. the let's, drill. Let's all yeah. of us do this together. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, we 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 sound like echoes. Also, you know, yeah. Most of us are fathers or uncles yeah. or mm -hmm. brothers, mm -hmm. and therefore the grace of God, everyone else's children are ours too. This, well, we're older, Al. So in our generation, I got spankings from the neighbors. I didn't even get them from yep. my mother. Yep. And when somebody saw me out of you, Miss Fisher's boy, you need to get back over here. Mm -hmm. People had a different concern. They reached out and when they called it a neighborhood, that's exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. And that's also when the cops walked the beat and some of them lived in the neighborhood as opposed to a, a military force, which comes to govern what we do in these areas that they let us uh, hang out in before they reapportion it, redistrict everything. Don't get me started. But as far as him talking about patients, it's the same with, with mobile jazz. Uh, regardless of what we teach the kids and show them, uh, can you cuss? <laughs> can I cuss? On this I'm not, not bad. But what's the old saying? If you ain't seen shit, you don't know shit. Okay. So what we do is same as him. The boxing, as well as our, our recording studios, they're like shiny pennies. It's to get somebody to get in the door. And then you give them a safe atmosphere and people to trust. At that point, then they show you what they need. And then they tell you what they've seen and what they haven't seen. And, and then at that point is when you can interact and be a mentor, not an instructor. You don't talk. It's not like talking at people. It's talking to them. And, and half the kids we know, same as yours, they ain't had a hug in ages. And they don't sit around a table and eat dinner together and discuss the day. That stuff doesn't happen. So even when we get the kids food, we make them sit together and we sit there like it's a family. You know, it, it's just enough structure to keep the format, but it's loose enough to let them know we're not authoritarian. Right. We don't we don't yell at people. We share with people. It's, I don't have to convince you that I'm trying to sell something. If it's really good, I'm sharing it. OK, so it's a, it's about that. I heard it in Drill's voice. Mm -hmm. I heard him when he talked about it. I heard him w w when his pride rose up because he was helping somebody. You can't pay people to do that. You you can't you can't pay for us, and we are our brother's keeper. I don't care how problematic it is. I don't care how many hours of sleep you lose. Rest when you die, because right. there is no Brinks truck that follows us to the graveyard. Mm -hmm. You die having a million or owing one. Either way, you can't take it with you. So that's not the point anymore. Because mm -hmm. in my business in music, young kids coming to me telling me that they're using music to escape the bounds of their situation and to make money. That's not why I've been successful. I played music because it's my culture and that's the therapy we had since we didn't know to go to a doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay. All mm -hmm. the things we've done to sedate ourselves and to dance and sing and eat and overseas and food that, that had been thrown at us was was nothing but a form of therapy to keep us from going start raving mad. Let me okay, let me so let me go back. I, I understand that I understand yeah. the nature of that. Yeah. I appreciate you, Drill, and I can't wait to Thank forward you, your information to the young folks. Even though they're coming to me for music, they need all that they can get. So, yes, they brother, brother Williams, right? It's what's your first name, brother? Yes. Yeah, Phil Williams. Phil, Phil, Phil Williams. Phil Williams. 
Okay. Drill Williams. Yes. Drill Williams. So let me, let me go back to you, and we're going to hang out, all of us together, again, if if uh, Congresswoman Ilhan uh, is able to jump in, we'll just break in and talk to her and keep on rolling. But I wanted to go back because you mentioned, and I'm sure you'll say the same, Andre, but <clears throat> Brother Williams, you said that part of your mission is to recognize mistakes you've made, the challenges you've, you've had. I want to unpack that. So as you look back and reflect, what are some of the kind of things that you know now uh, in hindsight were you know, left turns that could have been right turns. And how do you therefore uh, impart uh, guidance, direction, an invitation to do right and be right to young people, an invitation that comes out of knowledge, experience, and uh, sincerity? What do you think? Uh, so one example, as I said, uh, I got married. Uh, I came up in a single family household. With my It was just my mom and I never met my dad. Mm -hmm. and I end up having kids by different women. Mm -hmm. And so growing up, you know, so you, that, that that's your picture, and that's what you're used to. And I had to learn the, 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 how hard that was to raise kids like that. Mm -hmm. And so I knew growing into, if I'm going to keep being a mentor to these kids, I have to start with myself first. So one thing I did, I did go get married. Mm -hmm. and, and now I'm having kids. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. You you need a hug today, Drill. <laughs> I'm sending you a we, hug, Drill. We we hugging each other, brothers. Man, you know. man, I'm hugging yeah. you, Drill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, just uh having kids under the wet lock now and uh getting get my life together first. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so, so I still go through it. I still make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And uh I just try to fix it for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excuse me when I talk about them, it get a little different. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's just, just like that. Though, just uh, I just go through. I go through my thing or whatever. But and I do it because I know I got to do it for other people. And it's not just for me, but it's for me first. Yeah. You know. Amen. So yeah, that's the passion I got for them. You know. So when I speak on them. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. So that's why sometimes it's hard to talk when I'm talking about them. But yeah, that's what it is. That's. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I just, like I said, this whatever mistake I made, I just, you know, just even being in the streets, you know, going, going through that, mm -hmm. you know, trying to show them, to turn away from there, how you can be a better person, yeah. no matter who you were yesterday, That's you right. could be somebody different, you could be somebody different today, which is which just a choice, just a change of attitude to say, hey, I want to go that way now, because mm -hmm. I don't want to be that no more, I don't want to be that no more, you know, so I'm giving them an example of who they can be. Mm -hmm. You know, it's towards in, a, in a physical form, you know, mm -hmm. and then whoever else they can imagine they can be. You know, I'm clearing up now. I'm good. I'm just I'm going through that. <laughs> All right. I got you. I got you. Man. I'm, right. I'm loving it, man. You know, and, you know, but see, as you speak, and this is why it all, all makes sense yeah. to me, brother. Uh, yeah. And this conversation makes perfect sense because I'm hearing the music of your life, the musicality Ooh. of your life. I'm hearing uh, creativity. I'm hearing improvisation. I'm hearing the source of life uh, that yeah. is is welling up in you and that is reflected yeah. in your life and in the, the sense of truth that you are confronting yourself with and confronting the world with, you know? Yeah. And you, you got the witness in your back seat. <laughs> you, you, you got the witness in your back seat. You, you have, and yes, you were saying, yes, you yes. have every absolute reason in the world to do right and be your best self. You have no choice. And uh, Andre, right. when, when I'm hearing this Woo! music, I'm saying music because I know that's your trade, and you trade yeah. in the spirit and in creativity yeah. and in technology and in genius. Of recognizing it, 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 and nurturing it is, a, it is it is a joyful noise that's all it is and and it's there for us it, it's just like it, it's it's part of our makeup okay uh, i mean no matter what the instrument is it's a drum mm -hmm. and that's the one thing they tried to take away from us when we came was the drum that's why i'm envious of the, the slaves that got dropped off in cuba in Brazil, they let them keep the drum. <laughs> we had to pick up guitars and stuff. <laughs> no, but but also it 
the only thing we can do is is lead by example. That your mm -hmm. your daughter's first love is you. Mm -hmm. You know, your children see you. They, yeah. It's like a puppy knows when to attack a stranger by watching who who he's with. Mm -hmm. Your children get get different ways of how to deal with the world by the example of their parents. Mm -hmm. And if the parents aren't able to to uh, to be open as you are, drill. Same with me. Yeah. My father cried before me instead of giving me the John Wayne. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. he was able to show me he was only as strong as he was compassionate. He was both. And there's no reason we can't be both. And what Al said earlier, I've always been taught that. Same way you said it too. It's You have a choice. It's like monogamy is not sometimes natural for people. Monogamy is choice. Yes. It's like saying, is, is, is my primal urge is worth me messing up my friendship? Okay. And it's got to be partners because it seems like black men, it seems like we've only been men for a minute and we're constantly trying to have to prove ourselves to people who really aren't qualified to judge us. Mm -hmm. So we're always trying to prove something. I, I'm not trying to prove zip. I got work to do. Okay. So all I'm doing is doing my work. You can say whatever the hell you want to say. I'm going to send my friends over to box and then they're going to come to me and play some music. Okay. The rest of that's just trash because day after tomorrow, you none of the people who mess with us were, were there when we were being raised. Okay. I didn't suckle on anybody else's breast but my mama's. Mm -hmm. All right. So in other words, we know where, where it lies, but we're, we're also colonized people. We're generations down of people. And I'm surprised all of us don't have Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. You know, we're constantly trying to make people feel comfortable with our problem. Mm -hmm. Well, don't Which, let me upset you. It's like critical race theory. There's no such thing. Mm -hmm. It's critical race theory. It's what happened or what didn't happen. Right. It's simple as that. And if if you were if you were strong enough to enslave me, your children got to be strong enough to hear about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I was strong enough to endure, I got some say so. Okay. Because if you could have built this joint by yourself, you wouldn't have brought me over here. Right. All right. Or 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 mixed us up to the point. That the only way you can live on is to mix the melanin together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I come from a mixed marriage, and when my parents got married, it was against the law. Mm -hmm. So when people tell me about what's legal, it, it was it was legal to own slaves. It was legal uh, 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 that you couldn't marry someone from another race. I, I, don't get me started. So I don't have time for that. We don't have time. Because once you peep the game and see that it's a caste system, you don't have time to be a victim of it. You, you got to hustle. You got to get on with it. Okay? Be I, because I, people who think they're running stuff, they're not. Russia thought it was going to be cold-blooded in Ukraine. <laughs> you got stopped. People, you got said, stopped. people said, nope. Not today. Okay. So I have so a picture I, behind I, me. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm appreciative of, of both you gentlemen. You know, Thank I you. can talk my butt off, but at the well, same gonna, time, gonna, I can listen, I can listen all talk. to you all day. Yeah, we're going to all talk. Be because I have a picture real. on this mantle behind right. me here. You mentioned right. the question of the colonizers and yes. the, the experience of slavery. And <clears throat> on this uh, photograph, you can't really see it. There it is. It's over my yes. shoulder. I'm sitting in the middle on the floor. And I've shared this on this show several times. I'm four years old in, in that photograph, about four. And next to me are my cousins and my sisters next to me on the, the divan, the, the couch. My mother, her sister, their mother, and their mother's mother, my great-grandmother. This picture is taken in about, I think, 1954 or so, when I'm five years old, maybe 1951. I think I'm four years old, born in 47. And the great-grandmother uh, dies in 1959. She was born in 1859. She lived to be 100. And it hit me one day, this picture's been right where it is there for as long as I've lived in this house, 
I moved in this house in 1973. It's just kind of you see it and you take it for granted. You just don't notice it. But all of a sudden, I went to see 12 Years a Slave. I came home and was sitting there thinking about the movie. And the photograph started glowing, it seemed. Made me get up and go pick it up and look at it and think about it and do the math. And I said, you know what? If she was born in 1859, she was the property of other human beings. I knew somebody personally. I'm not, this ain't something I read. This is something I know and something I experienced. I experienced the touch, the hug, the, the, I remember I tell people that she, when I was in Mississippi one time visiting the plantation he lived on, sharecroppers, walking through uh, a shed and there's a 55 gallon drum with cotton billowing out of it. They were cotton pickers. And I reached up because I was four years old or so or three and it was fluffy and white like cotton candy. I sucked my hand in it and she whacked me on my knuckles with a spoon saying, get your hand out of there. You don't know, could be a snake in that barrel of cotton. Don't put your hand where you can't see. Well, that was an instruction that stayed with me all my life. The most important thing though, Brother Williams and Brother Fisher, is that I think back now that here's a human being that I am connected to, my great-great-grandmother, that I actually knew and talked to, interacted with. This human being, when she was born, when she was my age, she was the property of another human being, of a colonizer. So the question is, you want me to think that that was in the past, long ago, get over it? Uh, absolutely not. Not going to? I can't. Justice is what I'm looking for. Yeah. And justice is what I'm living for. And so, you know, so just your, your thought about the, the word colonizer triggered the thought in me. But I also thought keeping the music and boxing equation alive, uh, <clears throat> Brother Williams, when boxers are boxing, I also see that as like dance, like theater, like musicality. And there's something exactly. happening when you when you attune the body to, to cosmic movement. You said the word, it's about movement. And so when you teach the way of movement embodied in the art and craft of boxing, what kind of alignment do you experience as a fighter or boxer and what are you teaching people, young people, the students to know, to learn about the cosmos, about the universe, about the way of existence? Am I making sense or am I, am I out to lunch? Talk, bought, talk, talk to me. I, I, I just bought a book called The Cosmos. Okay. <laughs> <And> I, <laughs> I, just bought, I just came out, I just bought another, a law of human nature. But um, boxing is spiritual. Mm -hmm. And that's why music goes hand in hand with it because uh, music is spiritual. Music, music can shape your thoughts and, and shape the way you feel. And so we definitely have music going on at the gym. And I'm probably the number one dancer in the gym. And I can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> when the music goes on, I get to dancing because I just get to let them know this is this is how you got to feel, man. You're just feeling good about yourself. You know, I don't, I don't want to just come in, here, come in here and start hitting this bag. No, come here, feel good. What's up? Give me a hug. How you doing? Turn the music on. You know, I want to get your mood right first. Mm -hmm. You know, because I understand we got to connect on spirit. Got to connect spiritually first. I can't just give you instruction, say authority, do this, do this, and do that. No, I want to connect with you today. How you doing? You know, make you smile, and now now you feel good about working and dancing and 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 uh, making your life better. And I'm giving you instructions to go with that, so you can take this outside of here. You know, yeah. whether you have a good day or bad day, you know, you can, you can end it with a good day. I always tell people it's not how you start your day. It's how you end your day. <clears throat> you know, so you always got a chance to make your, your ending a lot better, even with your life. It's not how you started your life. You can always, you, today you can change your ending. You know, so you don't have to, you, the cards you were dealt with, man, that's not, that don't have to be your ending. So that's, you right. So everything is spiritual. It comes with the music, dancing, everything's got to be involved. Eating, you know, the whole, the whole harmony has to be there. You know, you can't miss it. You can't miss a part. You miss a part. You don't have the whole harmony there. You need it all. So, Andre, you know, it, so. it's like it's scientific almost. It's like it's mathematical, right? It's an equation. There's a question of balance and harmony. Yeah. What do you think? Talk, talk about that for me, Andre. Well, it, it took people so many years that they did studies talking about 
the reaction of the, the, the fetus in the womb by hearing music or what music does to the brain. In other words, if you were listening to music and they put you in an MRI to check your brain waves, it looks like the 4th of July as opposed to a normal brain wave. And when they did that to musicians who were playing in the act of not just listening, but also making the music, it looked like a war. It, the right and left hemispheres of the brain were communicating. So in other words, we are the sum total of all of our moments we've been here and all the things our body goes through. You know, that that's why, you know, we're sad when people leave, but sometimes, you know, we haven't existed to endure. We've, we've insisted and we bore pain and then we die. It's like with me as a musician, even scientifically, it's like I played with Donny Hathaway. I played with a lot of people and they all seem to go tragically. You know, it's like, why do, why do black people always have to be involved with tragedy? Mm. It's like, why can't I just naturally just drop dead? <laughs> why does it have to be some other shit? Okay, mm. so I thought about that, but I also thought too that we're lucky we've endured this long because quiet is kept. We should all be totally stark, raving mad and skits. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, and the way we deal with that is the best way possible. And that's where the, the, the music comes in. And scientifically speaking, uh, it's already been proven what music does. And also just like the Buddhist or listening to that prayer bell or, 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 or hearing a certain tone or there's certain music. Why does it make you nostalgic? Why do you feel, think about your old girlfriend in high school? I mean, because those chords, what? They're from the earth. Mm -hmm. These sounds come from nature. They come from the earth. We're human animals, so we're part of nature too. We we keep removing ourselves from, from the source. We keep trying to make ourselves into something that we're not. We're part of the earth, okay? And what... Some black woman in Africa somewhere begot everybody. Yep. <laughs> the beginning. <clears throat> you know, it, it's just like the woman they keep using her cells to make uh, 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 cures for things. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. in, other, in other words, I, don't get me started. It, when people do a, a, a public relations campaign to convince me something is not worthwhile, I have to do my own research. Mm -hmm. And that research had to be about ourselves because we've been taught that we were irrelevant. If we were so ir ir irrelevant, what was the need for us? Okay. And the fact is, is people only go back to slavery. They, they don't realize the history of all of us before we ever got here. Yep. Okay. We, we, we wasn't washing toilets. <laughs> <laughs> we were but, but we but we invented indoor plumbing. Yes, and that, thank was, you. and that was thousands of years ago. <laughs> well, don't let me start about the Moors. Don't mm -hmm. let me talk about Timbuktu mm -hmm. and about the libraries and all the things that have happened. And you know, they keep they, they can't even give black people credit. It's got to be aliens landed and mated with monkeys or some stuff. I'm gonna put this book up here on the screen. <laughs> I'm reading. It's called What Int Shemsh by Aikwe. Yes. Arma, and it's uh -huh. called the uh, the way of companions, and this is a subtitle: myth, history, philosophy, and literature, the African record, and it suggests that we have to uncover the information that we created, that we invented, uh, the African way of knowing, and this is the same phrase: what and shemsh is uh, using Roman, you know, lettering, but above yes. it is the hieroglyphic symbols. And it even suggests that at some point in time, we have to question whether the language that we have uh, acquired and been raised in is a language that will allow us to free ourselves. Uh, and it, it's useful, we've mastered it, but inside it is a value system as yes. it's used that devalues our humanity or lets people yes. do that. We fought against that. We've resisted. But is there a process and a system that can change that? So that's, that's just the thought. That's, that's the same language also used in IQ tests. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in other words, uh, it's like a video I saw recently. Uh, 
somebody says gigantor and a, a young black boy says big as shit. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's, there's always a judgment of delivery based upon what caste system you're from. Right. And you got to read cast by Isabel Wilkerson. Got it. I'm reading it. Okay. And yeah. what, it, what it is, is the caste system was set here where we live before we ever got here. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is, it's based upon European BS. Mm -hmm. And the only way it works is someone has to be on the bottom. Yep. Okay. The African tribes didn't work that way. Yeah. This is the hierarchy versus the no, nomads market. in the desert uh, mm -hmm. had another thing going on. Yep. And, it's just like the Indians. Why did they move from one encampment to another? They didn't want to deplete the resources. Yep. So they'd move as the seasons change. That's being in tune with your environment. Yep. You know, and the only thing we seem to be in tune with is trying to make make cheese. Yeah. <laughs> trying to get money. Yeah. Let, yeah. Me, let, me, let, let me do two things. One, uh, you know, uh, Brother Williams, hang on as long as you can, but I want to make sure that you get a chance to keep inviting people up to the Northside Boxing Club and okay, let people yeah. know that they can support the club by purchasing. We can't mention prices on the station, but we can tell people what we're doing and why. And so I want you to tell people what the boxing club is doing in terms of marketing or selling these promotional items for the sake of underwriting the cost of providing training uh, and uh, engagement for young people so take a minute and do that and then andre i want to do the same thing with the the mobile jazz project sort of update what's going on right now with that but you and okay. i have a, a friend uh named maria isa who's a phenomenal artist and a wonderful human being who has put her hat into the political arena arena and yes. succeeding with an endorsement for State House of Representatives from District 65B in St. Paul. And mm -hmm. You're helping her with that campaign. I want to talk about that before we close today, okay? So, Brother okay. Williams, first of all, let's again remind and invite people to know and yeah. support the Northside Boxing Club. Uh, yeah, come on down to Northside Boxing Club. We're on 1704 33rd Avenue North, Minneapolis. North Minneapolis, the old fire station. And uh, yeah, we're we're selling the old uh, we're selling the drill boxing gloves to help sustain our gym, to make sure our kids can keep coming in there and keep getting these hugs and food and and love and the information. Uh, and keep pushing on, keep pushing this movement we got going on. You know, keep raising these babies as, as a village. And uh, like I was I was always told, you teach the kids inferiority, they'll find it for themselves. So you have to teach you have to give them confidence and teach them self esteem. And all this does, all this does is help provide us for us to keep doing this for them. And if anybody wants to come down and help share their, share whatever they have, Mr. Fisher, come on down and talk to them a little about music, whatever else you might be able to help and, and open them up or it's just a village, man. So it just, I thank everybody for being involved and thank everybody who comes down and donates, everybody who buys a pair of boxing gloves, a hat, a sweater, a shirt, or just wearing it. So I, I appreciate that too. And you so thank go on. Online at NorthsideBoxingClub.com, right? Yes, you can. Okay, or you can so go, or you go on, uh, yes. You can buy the merch there, right? You can buy the merch online? Yep. You can okay. buy the merch on Amazon, on, on Amazon.com Amazon as well. Okay, yes. great, great, great. Drill durable gloves. Yes. What's, the phone, what's the phone number up there? Uh, not a phone number. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, okay, so do you use the internet. That's fine. <laughs> That's the fine. music is always playing. We never answer the phone. So, okay. yeah, just one of the gyms. You got to walk in. Yeah. Show, it, show up. Show up. It's outgoing. It's outgoing. It's outgoing. It's outgoing. <laughs> Not Listen, coming. Brother, you know what? We'll get, we'll get the number ourselves. I'm going to post it on my Facebook site. I'll get your number, too, and put it on my Facebook page. Yeah, and we'll put okay, it on this. Perfect. We'll hear this yeah, around yeah. as well. Right. Andre, talk, yes, talk about uh, the Jazz Project and talk about our friend Maria Issa. Uh, we, 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 get, jazz, we got about ten, about ten minutes, I think. Yeah. Okay. Jazz Jazz Project is this is our eighth year. Mm -hmm. You remember when we started out? Yep. Uh, basically, it's an after school program and workshops. And instead oh, you know of, what? You know what? You yeah. know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Talk about Andre Fisher first. You are so fascinating. Take take three minutes. You know, I know you can't do it in three minutes, but All right. give that brief uh, story on on you. Well, I started out with music. My parents are musicians. My uncle was Claire Fisher, an arranger who did all the stuff for Prince and 
Robert Palmer and Paul McCartney and all those people. Uh, I played with Curtis Mayfield in the Impressions, with Jerry Butler. I played with the OJs. I played behind Gladys Knight. I formed my own group called Rufus and Shaka Khan. I produced Tell Me Something Good and the early hits on all the Rufus records. Uh, then I became a producer. I was musical director for Anita Baker, for Etta James. Uh, my ex-wife's Natalie Cole. I produced what? Unforgettable. I did what? Tony Bennett. I did Nina Simone. I did uh, I did all, all kinds of people. So the, the deal is I worked for Quincy Jones, who's vice president of his label, of his jazz a &R. I was ex-senior vice president of MCA Records Music Division and also vice president of 20th Century Fox uh, Music Publishing Writer Development. Uh, all of that was what I did in between doing my first job, which is dad, and taking care of all five of my children and my nine grandkids. So I've done a, I've done a lot of things, but in my family, if you go ask my father and tell him all the great things I've done and all the Grammys I've won, he'll look at me and he say, "If you're telling me he's doing a good job, that's what he's supposed to do." Mm -hmm. You don't you don't win, win a reward for your responsibility, right? It's just what you do. In other words, that's that's what I do. That's my job. So oh, that's uh, I love the story. I love how you tell it. Thank you. Thank you again. <laughs> it's the truth. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, so the the jazz project. Talk about that now. Uh, it it's copied after Billy Taylor's Jazzmobile in Harlem that he started in 1964. He got a flatbed truck and he brought it into the boroughs of New York because there was problems between Spanish Harlem and Black Harlem. And he wanted to make a musical renaissance and let the black kids know and all the people that jazz is ours. It's part of our culture and it needs to be appreciated. So he put a flatbed truck in the middle of the brownstones, close off the block, all right? Put Duke Ellington on the truck or Miles Davis. And all the kids saw that, all right? Because kids didn't see acts like that. You had to pay for it or go to a club, or your mama told you about it. Mm -hmm. But what he did is he exposed us to ourselves and, and all of a sudden started to make it cool. And instead of being a gangbanger, it, you didn't look crazy if you walked home with a trumpet under your arm. That was like cool now. So he did that, and it's still in existence, the Jazz Bill, and I copied it. Because they had brownstones to do it in. We had all these beautiful parks here in Minnesota. Okay? So I made a deal with the parks to take their truck and to go out and do free jazz concerts and workshops to kids out in the parks to expose it to the children. Then I, instead of just being a, a nonprofit that always got your hand out all the time, I turned this into a vendor and made a contract with the city of St. Paul and St. Paul Parks. We have mobile jazz studios and four rec centers now. We deal with X amount of kids every day. We've been in high school, uh, middle schools, uh, with after school programs, summer school programs. And right now, some of my funding comes from the city of St. Paul, certain grants and money that we raise on our own. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, we went from one instructor to many, and also we're partners with the Youth Social Work Department, University of Minnesota. That's who helped us do our curriculum. But the main thing is the instructors. It's Maria Issa. It's been Ashley DeBose. It's been the Lioness. It's been all kind of great people who are most talented here in the Twin Cities and who are also mentor children. So that's what Mobile Jazz does. And Maria Issa was one of my main mentors to mm -hmm. teach the children. Mm -hmm. She, she could take over a room of 80 people and run the room. She knows Just exactly like what she's doing. I've seen her do it. She's so good. Yeah. So that's that's how she and I connected. Mm -hmm. And she's a great rapper. She was a battle rapper in high school and beat all the dudes. Mm -hmm. and she's a great singer. She's an actress. But more than that, she's a mom. Mm -hmm. And she cares about the, the community. That's why I got on board. I know her well because I respect what she does and how she treats children. Mm -hmm. And she was also recently involved in, in the the bond initiative with the state of Minnesota for cheaper insulin mm -hmm. because she's also a diabetic and right. she saw that people were, were having to decide between eating and getting insulin. And she said, Oh no. So she hooked up with another organization and they wound up getting an initiative passed with, with the, with the governor 
for cheaper insulin here in the state of Minnesota. So she's a fighter for that as well. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why I, I'm involved with her. And uh, District B also got reapportioned as far as redistrict. Uh, I'm not even in the district to vote for her anymore. <laughs> uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was. They made the street two streets from me as the dividing line. So you're out of the so, district now. Yeah. Yeah. So so now I'm I'm getting more more people on board, but. They threw more of the West Side period in, as mm -hmm. well as uh, West St. Paul mm -hmm. and downtown. Mm -hmm. So she's got a, it's almost like two cities and two school boards and she's, uh, she's really busy. And she's doing what she's gotta do and at the same time take care of her diabetes, raise her new daughter, uh, help these kids and, and uh, being a Boricua, being a- uh, uh, Rico. calls herself, she sells, Calls herself a, a Puerto Rican, right? So that yeah. that's what I'm doing. You know, yeah. she's like our version of uh, AOC. Of she Ocasio is she's fierce. when she yeah, comes from fierce. comes from that stock. Her her mom and I are friends, and uh, yeah. the the family has a legacy. Is a legacy family uh, fighting for justice, for clarity, for opportunity for all of our uh, people. So uh, she's well, the she's right fierce person. And she she can yeah. box too. She can box too, I'm sure. <laughs> Don't mess with her because she can box too. She got a mean right. Gotta have okay. it. Well, listen, yeah. we're, we're out of time. My thanks to Brother Williams. Uh, and th do, they, do they call you Drill? Yeah, do they call you Drill Williams? Yes, Brother Drill Williams. They just call me Drill. Drill. Okay, Brother yes, Drill, sir. thank you so much for being here. Uh, 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 Michelle thank Madison thank again you. said, Brother Williams, congratulations on this endeavor. Your, your, on your marriage you. and upcoming Thank baby. And uh, yeah. so, she, so she's going to buy some merchandise online for her grandsons. I'm going to buy some merch online as well. So um, for myself. Yes, you. So you'll see me yes, in this sir. show, uh, rocking Northside right. Boxing Club. <laughs> so I'll be promoting what you're doing, Thank brother. You. Me too. I, I, I got dibs. I got to get me a couple of hoodies right now so I can advertise. There Thank we go. And Thank brother, you. brother. Thank you. Uh, Brother Andre, oh, no, man. Thank you. Andre, man, it's always, always a pleasure. And, you know, uh, both of you brothers, uh, this door is always open. The platform is always available. And just uh, hook up and let's make it happen anytime we can. To my listeners, uh, I want you to know, I want to thank you for being a listener here on KFAI. And those who are connecting through us, through Facebook, through Black Press USA, through Insight Facebook, through YouTube. We thank you. We're asking for your help. We want to grow this platform, grow this engagement. And if you're watching us or connecting on social media, like it, share it, uh, or subscribe if it's on YouTube, if that's where you are. And keep listening to KFAI. Support this station. Uh, call now. We're in our pledge drive. You can call. You can support by calling 612-375-9030. And we have our, our inside uh, betting game for this promotion at the beginning of the show. Mason and I came up with this idea. We'll keep it open that uh, everybody's talking about the, um, the slap uh, heard around the world, right? If yeah. you kind of see it uh, Will Smith's way, then call and make a pledge or make a donation for 30 no, no, if you see it, Chris Rock's way, uh, make a pledge for $35. If you see it, Will Smith's way, make a pledge for $45. And sometime today, we'll say we got X number of pledges uh, reflecting that we support Chris Rock and X number of pledges saying we support Will Smith. The, the important thing is support the station, make a pledge, but also use this okay. event as a teachable moment. We got to talk about it and talk it through, take it to the gym, and go get some hugs after. That's what we're going to do. I'm Al McFarland. We'll see you all next time. Go ahead, Andre. Go ahead. We're, we're all soldiers. We don't have yeah. time for this. That's right. We don't have time yeah. for that foolishness that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, right. Will has a lot of issues, if you read his book as well, Yeah. Uh, based course. upon protection and mm -hmm. his feeling to protect people and his relationship that happened with his father and his mom. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us are walking wounded. Yeah, but he's still a soldier, and we still got work to do. Thank right. you, Al, for having me on. I'm so happy I came on today 
to experience you, Brother Drill. Thank you very much. I appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, thanks, thanks I, me. I'm glad to meet you. Thanks. I love you, Al. You, you, I love Captain you as McCarl. well, man. Good to see you. <laughs> so I think the station's ready. I'm looking into the studio. Is late? Is uh, let me see if I've got her. Yeah, there she is. Hey. <laughs> yes, you do. How are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you too, and I agree wholeheartedly with Mr. Fisher. We right. we ain't got no time for that foolishness. <laughs> Lady J, thank you. I'm handing it thank off you, to you. Al. Thank you so much. Have a great great day. Take thank care, you. everybody. And thank Bye -bye. you, Elmer Farland, for conversations that matter to communities that matter, both locally.